So in this video we're going to look at how to use GPower which is a free bit of statistical software available from this website and it's something that we should use before we start our research uh, projects because it gives us an indication of how many uh, participants we need to recruit to ensure we get good statistical power and by statistical power I mean the uh, ability to um, detect uh, an effect when one actually does exist. So sometimes we run research projects and we don't have enough people in there. So we're, we're, we're destined to not find anything from, from the get-go. So before we get into how to use G-Power, I'll just give a bit of background information behind it to really set the scene as to why calculating your sample size is, is so important. So we start here, whenever we run uh, null hypothesis significance testing, which is where we use our t-tests and ANOVAs uh, and the like, the data we collect is essentially a ratio between the signal and, and noise, which otherwise the, the effect of, of the intervention divided by all of the error that, that's captured by it. And it's that ratio or that, that t-value in, in this case, in the case of a t-test, that will then determine whether that value is large enough to be um, class is significant. So we take an example where we look at the difference between two groups and let's say the difference in jump height between these two groups is three centimeters. Well if we divide that by low amount of variability that might come back as significant effect. If the variability is really high that will probably come back as no significant effect. There's no difference between between groups. So let's focus in on, on the variability. Then when we do effect size, it's the same thing. It's the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is captured here in, in this S. But when we do t-tests and overs, we're trying to apply our results to, the, to um, similar samples in, in, the, in, in the general population. So to enable that generalization or that, or that inference, we actually bring the n number into account so we, we divide the error by the amount of um, participants. So the first thing you'll note then is irrespective of what that error value is, if the sample size is large enough it's likely to drown that out and even real trivial differences between groups can be can be significant. And actually actually some of the critics of null hypothesis significance testing will point that out as a flaw. Uh, irrespective of that um, it, when you think about in sport, for example, we typically don't get very high numbers because we're restricted by squad size, etc. So it means we really have to focus on the standard deviation to give um, our analysis the best possible chance of finding an effect when, when one exists. Okay, so let's just get into G Power and start to make this a bit clearer. So when you open it up, it will, it will look like this. There are different tests. We'll focus on t-test, but we'll look at ANOVA and, and a correlation just as, a, as an example in a moment. So t-test, we'll look at, uh, to get going, we'll look at uh, matched pairs. So that's the, the same group. So you test them pre and post a particular intervention. Then we want to look at a priori. So we're going to calculate all of this, the, the participants required before we undertake our investigation. If we did it afterwards as an afterthought or because we were restricted by sample size or as convenient sampling, then we can calculate our power given our sample size and we do that post hoc. But again, we're looking at it in just a moment. So a priori, then how many tells? That's um, the direction of the, of the uh, um, analysis. So by default, it's normally on, on one tell, which means you've got a really good idea of the fact that they're going to get better or they're going to get worse. But when we don't know the direction, we just put two tells. So they might get better, they might get worse. We're not sure. So typically, we, we put out two tells. This is the effect size now. That's what effect size, what, what magnitude of difference do you want to be able to detect at a significance level of, in this case, 0 0.05. And again, you would have seen other videos on, on effect sizes, but 0 0.5 is a moderate effect. So we're going to be able to find a moderate effect at a statistically significant level. And the alpha level is normally at 0 0.15, right? Which is that there's only a 5% chance of us making an error and reporting an effect that doesn't exist. The other thing then is we have power. And we always put that at 0 0.8. By default, it might be 0 0.95, but that's... that's um, really unrealistic the sample size you need is is can be through the roof you'll see that even at eight percent is quite high so we really put it at 0.8 which means we have an 80 percent chance of finding an effect 
if one exists. And all we do is we click uh, calculate. So you can see that we need 34 people to have an 80% chance of finding an effect if one exists when the alpha level is set at 0.05, which is convention, and when the difference between the groups is classed as moderate. But if you wanted to find a really small effect, so again, we'll know from our effect size videos that that's 0.2. So to be able to detect a small effect at this significance level with this power, you need nearly 200 people. So again, it becomes quite unrealistic again when you think about sport. So that's the part of the limitations of it, but it means in sport we need to focus on getting that standard deviation down, which we'll speak about in just a moment. Anyway, I'll put that back at, um, at, at 0.5, so we've got our 34. And again, if we ramp the power up, so if we wanted 95% chance of finding one when one exists, you see that the, the um, sample size starts to go up. So it's far more realistic to be at, at 80. But this is matched pairs. What if you had two different groups? You want to see which group was the fastest, jumped the highest, etc. So we go to independent means, so two different groups. Again, we'll go uh, two tails, 0.5 for the effects, 5% error, 8% power. And this ratio is the ratio of people in each group. So one means that there's the same amount of people in group uh, two as there in, in in group one. If there was twice as many in one to the other, then the ratio would be 0.5. So now when we press calculate, we can see that we need 128 people, that's 64 um, in each group. So again, from a sports perspective, it starts to become quite unrealistic, and which is why when you think about who you're going to recruit, we have to really get focusing in on this standard deviation because that's the other bit of variability that affects whether um, uh, an effect or the signal is deemed significant or not. And remember, when you think about that, the standard deviation is affected by all of these different different factors. And real good testers uh, or, or those undertaking the uh, investigation will make sure that they've tried to standardize this as best as possible from the familiarization, how homogenous the group is, the kit that they use, etc. So, so we really need to focus on this, given that our N numbers normally not, not very high. So just to look at um, uh, a few other types of tests, again, firstly, if I go back to this match pairs, I can press calculate, I can also think about what would happen if I did this afterwards. I can just click post hoc and here if I again two tells this is the effect I wanted to find my error rate. If I only had um, 20 people in each group um, you can see that my power is 56 percent. So again it starts to become um, a bit harder to find these these effects. Um, let's go back to um, a priori if I wanted to run um, an ANOVA, I could look at, this is a one-way ANOVA, and um, here you've got the, the um, effect sizes, you can see that ANOVA is slightly different, 2.5 was, um, it is a moderate effect for an ANOVA where it was 0.5, we looked at the t-test and you've got um, the other values that come up when you hover the, the mouse over, over there, and then just the number of groups. So again, we might just put um, We'll drop that down to eight percent, and however many groups you, however many groups you have, and that's how many uh, the total uh, sample size required. Also, you have um, correlations, so this would be a, uh, for a correlation. Again, don't know which direction it's going to go in. Here we have different amounts of power, 0.1 for small, or sorry, for, for an effect size, 0.1, small, 0.3, moderate, 0.5, uh, for a large effect, so how big is the effect you want about to detect, at what alpha level, again, we always go in 0.05, we always put this at, at 80, and this is what do you expect if there is no difference, and we'd expect a correlation of zero, and you can see there that that, that sample size is 84 people that, that you need. Um, if we put that up, to 0.5 and you can see the number drops down and becomes a bit more realistic but it does mean that you can only detect large uh, relationships at a significant at a significant level so it's important to undertake 
uh, this analysis before you start and maybe recognize some of the limitations of the convenience sampling or working with a squad and if anything it will draw your draw us back to the the real important conclusion that we always make when we test and that's focus on getting that the error down from the standard deviation make sure your groups homogeneous make sure your kit's good make sure the environment is is um, standardized and make sure your athlete has good technical ability which is consistently developed uh, con consistently produced